Anterior neck massage, when done correctly, can be very effective. And it is true that there are some things that we need to avoid in the area. The carotid artery, the jugular vein, lymph nodes, the brachial plexus. These are lots of things that we don't want to put too much pressure into, but hopefully I can teach you how to avoid those and to give a safe and effective anterior neck massage. For this tutorial, we're beginning with the patient in the supine position with the head on the pillow. Now with a bolster pillow like this from Physique, we can actually turn it around to provide ourselves more space underneath the neck so we're not all fingers and thumbs and moving the head around and trying to wedge the fingers in. So before we begin, just pop your head up for me. Turn it around, head back down. Sometimes the ponytail can become a bit uncomfortable there. So they can either move it to the top or we can make some adjustments moving side to side. Let's get some wax on the area and we're focusing on the anterior neck. So some of the muscles that we've got in this area, as I go over them, we've got the scalenes just in here, the anterior scalenes that we're going to interact with more so than the others, but we have got the middle and posterior scalenes as we come around to the posterior aspect of the neck. And then slightly more anterior, we've got sternocleidomastoid. So this is a big muscle and it's one that tenses up when people get torticollis or wry neck and it can become quite short and tight just through lifestyle habits and posture. So this will always benefit from some work and quite often people are afraid to get in there. I think because of its proximity to all of the aforementioned structures, particularly the windpipe and the throat. But that forms the anterior border that we're not going to go any further around the front. So just along there, and if we're struggling to find it, we can just get the person to turn their head to the left. So turn, actively turn your head to the left for me. Keep going, you can see it just there, perfect. Okay, I'm back. We know the origin insertion goes from the sternum up to the mastoid process, and we can follow that. We're gonna begin just with some gentle effleurage, and this is to spread the wax. It's to warm the area, warm the tissues, and to also introduce the patient to our touch and we're just moving very lightly but we're going to start to come into contact with some of those structures that I mentioned before so thinking particularly here about the carotid artery and jugular vein so a general knowledge of anatomy and physiology is helpful so we know roughly where they are but if you feel a pulse then we're going to just keep on moving we're keeping broad thumbs making sure we're not poking in and keeping those effleurage strokes moving. I'm alternating hands now and bringing the thumbs underneath the clavicles because that's where the anterior scalenes are going to go into the first and second rib. As we then start to put the pressure down as we come posteriorly, we come into the upper trapezius. Upper trapezius, I'm sure we all know how good an upper trap massage, shoulder massage can feel but quite often the focus is just on the posterior aspect. Here we can really focus on the anterior side. And I'm using more of a petrissage squeeze and lift technique, more of a kneading kind of technique here. And what you can't see is my fingers around the back. They're actually lifting up, squeezing and pulling through with flat fingers to give that petrissage effect. You can also change the emphasis by putting some knuckles to work on the back there. So now I've got a hand a bit like that and we're going through with as many knuckles as I can. You will feel the knobbly insertion point of levator scapula around there. Don't pay too much attention to that. Some people do. That always feels like a knot. It is not a knot. Not forgetting the other side. Very nicely now, we've got some passive head and neck movement. And if you've got a confident touch, assertive pressure and good client handling skills, the patient, depending on the individual, should acquiesce to your movement. So they should move the head wherever you want it to go without tensing up too much. What you may not be able to see here is this hand, just underneath, hello, is just securing the occiput just there. So I'm not choking anyone, just a light grip around up into the base of the skull, and that's keeping the head where it is, but you can allow some movement there and you'll know that the patient is relaxed if they allow that head to just bob left to right. So with the hand in that position, we can then move into a slightly different stroke. We put the emphasis onto the fingers, push down into the shoulder with the left hand. So I'm providing a stretch there with the left hand and the fingers 
of the right side are working up into the neck. And we should get a little bit of sternocleidomastoid, but primarily scalings and some upper trapezius and levator scapula there as well. Trying to make that one fluid motion, pushing the shoulder down into a stretch and then using all the fingers, little finger down to index finger, pushing into the neck. That's going to be pushing into the transverse processes, which can sit quite superficial somewhere around here. So just be a bit careful. If you feel anything a bit bony there, you're probably poking a bit too hard. And we'll swap to the other side and just make sure that you practice that because if we're clumsy in between transition from side to side, then that can really put the patient off. It can get rid of some of that relaxation effect that we've, um, we've been striving to achieve. And you may have your work to do again, just to get them to relax and to trust you. And there is a lot of trust involved here because it's the neck. It's a crucial part of our anatomy. So there needs to be trust in what you're doing. So let's move seamlessly into some pull throughs. So I'm seated for this, but I'm actually gonna stand because I do prefer to have my body weight over the top of the patient. That way I can provide a little bit of lift up through the neck into extension as I pull through. And it's the fingers and the thumb that are working here. So don't forget about either. We've got fingers that are pressing through into the side of the neck. The thumb's just gonna come around to sternocleidomastoid. And the palm of the hand also providing some broad pressure where the cervical spine spinous processes would be. Practice this one slowly, get comfortable with it. And then when you're happy, we can increase the speed and some variation is encouraged because the same thing done over and over again will become irritating after a while, no matter how nice it feels initially. Sometimes I'll just place my tummy up against the top of the head there as well. It gives me something to pull into. You may be able to see my feet in the shot now. I've got a very split stance and that's intentional. I want to keep my upper body upright so that my posture isn't compromised here. I'm using the elbows to pull through, keeping the arms close into the hips and making sure that I cover all of the soft tissue that I can from the clavicle up to the mastoid process. So now I've started to change the emphasis on my fingers. Instead of flat pads, I'm actually pushing with a slightly more pokey kind of flexed finger into the posterior neck, either side of the spine. It's not just the upper trapezius and levator scapula there. We also have the splenii muscles and the erector spinae. And uh, they're not so easily accessed from the lateral aspect. So let's get in posteriorly. It's just some variation. Most people will happily lie there and have this done to them all day. So you need to make sure it's sustainable for you. And we'll break that up with some more initial effleurage that we began with. And hopefully we can get a bit deeper into those scalings. You can go both thumbs at the same time, or we can alternate one thumb and then the other. When it comes to sternocleidomastoid, we can pay that muscle some more attention. And you'll see me just passively turning the head and neck with this hand, keeping my position. We can work from the mastoid process just behind the ear. I'm trying to roll over the longitudinal fibers of sternocleidomastoid. And as we get down into the, the fleshier, softer part of the neck, that's where some of these structures that we want to avoid will be. So make sure your touch is broader in those areas. We can also apply something of a C-clamp Try not to put too much pressure in through the fingers. I'm gathering up sternocleidomastoid underneath them and you can see the different fibers, the sternal fibers and the clavicular fibers. There they go, passing underneath my touch. Just make sure that you cover all of the surface area of that muscle. The same on this side, if you're running out of wax, don't hesitate just to pop the head down gently and top it up. But for now we're okay. 
and let's find SCM. There it is, not quite as prominent on this side, and sometimes the muscular development of that muscle can tell you a little bit about its hypertonicity or how tight it is. And as we get up into that meaty junction up into the mastoid process, that's where a lot of tension can be held. And you can do some good work into there. Instinctively, I can feel it's a bit tighter up here than it was further distally down towards the sternum. So I'm just changing my approach with a reinforced finger, rolling up into the mastoid process. And that might be a bit intense, so let's break that up with something altogether more pleasant. So we can really get into the occiput here as well. We've got a set of muscles just underneath the occipital ridge called the suboccipitals, and they can get very, very tight. They have um, a little bit to do with eye movement as well as just stabilizing the head and neck. So we're palpating for the occipital ridge and using the weight of the head and neck to allow our fingers to be more effective in pushing up into that little cavity there. But it can feel very tight and there are muscles that are blocking the way. So don't force your way in. I'm rocking my body back and forth and just giving small rhythmic movements to try and break things down, facilitate some relaxation, and to get deeper into that area. That will irritate, this will break it up some slightly bigger, more superficial strokes. I'd recommend repeating any of the techniques that I've done so far where you've picked up on tightness for the individual that you're treating and always making sure to vary from one stroke to the next. And I haven't found anybody yet that doesn't like the session to be ended with some rope pulls. I hope you enjoyed this. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe, even comment if you like. It helps the channel and it helps me to produce these types of videos that hopefully can help you as therapists.